Okay, hello everyone, this is Kuroshiro and welcome to Hunter tier list for season 22. Now, onto the tier list, we have five tiers. First off, we have Dream Much and Friends, and then we have Niche, High Guarantee, Applicable, and then Hunters who are highly counterable by any survivors in general. So, yeah, not much changes from last season tier list, but there should be some Hunters who moved up and some hunters who move down based off what I've seen in the comment section for season 2100 tier list. But now then, onto the tier list we go, shall we? First and foremost, Hellember. Hellember will be considered as highly counterable just because his chase is very... The only good thing about him is his camp. His chase is very slow and in current meta survivors where you have flywheel and everything's about transitional kiting, it's very hard for Hellember to get someone down ASAP to be fair so his only advantage is camping but when there's a merc on the team that's an oof moment so when you're in low tier you either have to ban seer or merc but when you're high tier you can ban those two in exchange now you have first officer and gravekeeper so then like your camp doesn't really matter anymore if they are those type of survivors rescuers around which is why i'm saying hellember is highly counterable he has low movement speed and his attack speed is considered one of the longest which is why you know it's flywheelable in general so that's my take on hellember now smiley face for smiley face last season he was low last season he was highly counterable as well he was considered as crying the corner but this season i'm gonna put him on applicable Right? Because of Flywheel's nerf, Flywheel was originally 30 seconds, now his nerf went up to 50 seconds. I believe that Smiley Face can actually land his rockets onto a survivor before they can, you know, use Flywheel. So, if you can get a rocket 50 se before 50 seconds, get a survivor to half health, you will have your blink next. Either you can blink in for the hit, or you can just use your rocket, get the Flywheel out, and then blink if you want to play it that way to be a little bit safer. Which is why for me, for this season, Smiley Face is applicable in a lot of ways. Of course, it depends on how well you play Smiley Face, but all in all, he's a bit better this season compared to last season. Now then, next on the tier list, we will have Gamekeeper. Gamekeeper will also be considered as applicable, maybe just a little bit higher than Smiley Face, because, you know, if survivors have flywheel after Smiley Face gets someone returning to the main for the first time everyone has a flywheel so it's a bit hard for smiley face for a second chase but gamekeeper in comparison he only has an eight second cooldown with his hooks and of course if he reaches the max presence he has infinite hooks which is great his traps allows a certain kiting area to he to be useless so some some kiting areas depending on where he places his traps would be considered as useless you can't really kiting it because you either have to take the traps or you have to rotate out and not take the traps either way if gamekeeper is able to do that then he can definitely land a hitch and then blink down for second third fourth chase etc even if survivors flywheel his hook they will still get a mini slow debuff which to me i feel like isn't too bad of course if you're not able to hook them to you and hit them that hurts a lot but you still have that mini buff, mini debuff there and your next hook is going to be 10 seconds. So it's not that bad, which is why I think Gamekeeper is applicable. He also has very a very nice chair camp, right? But that simply depends on luck and it also depends on how well you play Gamekeeper. So yeah, that's about it for GK. Depending on your trap placement, your hook, how survivor flywheels and your camp mind game. Uh, moving on, we will have Ripper. Ripple, Ripper will also be coming up, right? Ripper, Ripper will also be coming up on the tier to applicable now because of Flywheel once again. Last season, it's because of 30 seconds. This season, it went up to 50 seconds. So for Ripper mains, it's easier to it's land your Foggy Blade now, right? So it's easier now to land your Foggy Blade, which is why, um, which is why, like, it's not too bad even if they flywheel your second floggy bait that's all right because the fog will be, the, the fog trails will still be on the survivor so you can just catch up and blink the survivors down uh for ripper in general for ripper in general he gets his fog every 16 seconds if i'm not wrong so like 
considering the fact that it takes you at least you know 20 seconds to find a survivor and then by the time you found one you have 20 seconds or 30 seconds to land your foggy blade which i don't think is that bad um so yeah that's about it for ripper ripper is similar to all the other hunters here just get cypher rushed way too easily Ripper doesn't have any map control compared to GK and Smiley Face, but he does have a relatively re he does have really fast movement speed buff, and he does he is like a double hit hunter like Foggy Blade, and then you can immediately catch up the hit with a normal attack compared to Smiley and GK. But for Ripper, because of his Cypher Rush potential, all what survivors really have to do is summon Crouch, and then they rush the other two fast decoding survivors just rush the Cyphers. On and on, that's just a sad thing for Ripper Mings. Next on the list we will have Violetta, so Soul Weaver. Soul Weaver will be considered as Ty Guarantee as I said in my Hunter Flywheel tier list as well. Flywheel doesn't really counter Violetta because even if she misses the hit she recovers her like attack relatively fast because of web treads, web speed boost. Right, because that increases her interaction speed boost, speed boost as well. So even if they do Flywheel it Violetta can just, you know, put a web tread on and then still get her, still maintain her tree stacks and then get the hit and then blink down. Uh, for Soul Weaver, I'm saying it's a tight guarantee because if Survivor do decide to sell, that means that Soul Weaver can, you know, Soul Weaver can save her webs. Soul Weaver can save her web, web, web points and if they do sell, then Soul Weaver would ha will have at least 120 web points, right? So then like for the second chase, it'll be relatively fast, even if you don't have blink. You have 120 web points per each web tread, it's 15 points. So as you can see, it's like it's like eight you 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 have like eight webs to link link on, like eight webs in a row to link to catch up the survivors and then hit them twice. I think that's more than enough because three webs equals the maximum speed boost, which is very scary for Voileta. Which is why I'm saying, like, you know, even if they do sell, Voileta is still tie guarantee. And of course, with if you t if you like time your presence right, you can do a double spit and then they can't rescue. But of course, that only works against every survivor except for first officer and for mercenary. Moving on, we will have Geisha. Geisha will simply be considered as niche, right? Uh, she's not a part of Dream Witch and Friends because a lot of like, well, not a lot of survivors counter her now because of Enche's nerf. But Geisha has high movement speed. Geisha has high chase. Geisha doesn't have map control, but her map control mainly comes from her, comes from her chase when she departs up into the air, and then butterfly dashes from the air to a greater distance. Now, Geisha also has camp capability as we have seen in Koa, no not in Koa, in IVS 2022. Of course, for all Moosing's Geisha, and if you have been on my stream, I have performed that camp several times, maybe once only, Lamal. I'm complimenting myself too much. Uh, Geisha's camp is, Geisha, Geisha doesn't, Geisha's camp isn't based on soul departure. Her camp is basically, you put a, you put a butterfly on the survivor, you dash to them and then you hit before you land onto the ground and then hit again. That's basically how her camp works. So she has good, she has an okay camp. I'm not saying it's the best compared to Bonbon and Sculptor and Anne. So she has an okay camp because it's not always gonna work. Sometimes you're just gonna land on the ground, sometimes you're just gonna hit the chair sadly. She has a very high chase and her map control is mediocre. You can slug as Geisha, which I think is great overall and in current meta, most, survi most survivors are based on transitioning, so Geisha is great against these type of survivors. Of course, Geisha may be countered by Tai Kiting and, you know, by survivors taking your butterfly and just keep looking at you. And you can dash, you're basically a walking moron. No, you're not. You're basically a um, walking um, marionette, let's say it this way, because, you know, you can't really do anything except for walk. So, yeah, that's for me, for Geisha. She's niche. Moving on, we will have Woo Woo. Uh, personally speaking, I believe Wu would be a little bit higher this season as well. Cause for, I'm joking, he's applicable. <laughs> I'm joking, sorry. Uh, even if Flywheel has been increased from 30 to 50 seconds, it doesn't really matter. Cause like, cause like Wu, it's really hard for Wu to land a hit, right? And of course, if he does land a hit, it has to be an ambush hit. 
So for Wu, it simply depends on if he can land his like umbrella hit or not, the ambush hit when you teleport. And he does have ma full map control, he does have like some kind of basic decent camp, but that's only when you're in presence 2, that's only when you're in presence 2. Uh, he's applicable because his presence 2 gets countered by flywheel, his presence 2 also gets countered by survivor's items in a way, you know, the white form and the blue with dark form, it does get countered to a certain extent. His first chase really depends on his ambush, if you can't ambush well and then blink down or even like get him down after the ambush, it's really hard for Wu to win, because Wu is considered as a walking hunter. Right, the only thing you do have is your belt, but when you're in black form, you move slower. And of course, your attack speed is faster, but your attack range is lower compared to white form. So there is this small balance there for Wu. He's applicable, flywheel, of course. Even if you do manage to land your first hit, you wouldn't be able to get your phase one open that fast because of insolence. Usually, it'll open 40 seconds into the game after you get your first hit, but. Let's just say by the time that happens, Survivor can pl probably flywheel you because you know 50 seconds in. And then of course when you blink down great and great, they will sell. Probably you may have map control, but then like if survivors know what hunter you are, they'll be very careful of your ambush. So your map control is great. But are you gonna are you gonna successfully ambush survivors every time when they camp in? Highly unlikable, to be fair. But of course Wu is applicable. You know, he counters some survivors, he some, survi some survivors can risk him, it simply depends on how you play Wu Wu. Uh, moving on, we will have... Now then, for Photographer, uh, I'm gonna put a Photographer on applicable as usual. Just don't mind the tier list, whatever you see here when it says highly counterable. I just decided to change it to stare when I'm editing it right now. Photographer is still going to be applicable for me, reason being. Reason being that there's actually good photographers out there who knows how to counter certain survivors and a lot of the harasser has been nerfed so Photo usually isn't too afraid of harassers except for maybe like you know forward but all in all I'd say photos will ban forward and seer and someone else along with seer but for photographer to come out photographer has a camera right but the problem with the camera is if two survivors decodes the same cipher or if prisoner connects a cipher to another survivor cipher it'll be an immediate one cipher down right point number one point number two there's a lot of things that counter photo like one of them would be when you get chaired you just down near a corner near your teammates and your teammates will heal you up as a photographer player you have to rely a lot on intuition and luck in my opinion so you have a 25% chance of finding the survivor in whatever corner or whatever area you're in. But if you don't find them in 15 seconds, you're screwed. Why? Because it takes 15 seconds for them to heal. Right? It takes 15 seconds for a survivor to heal another survivor. 15 to 20 seconds. It takes 30 seconds for them to self heal. And of course, if they brought flywheel, they will heal even faster. Here, you, as you can see, why I put photographer on a pillar. Of course, photo may have photo may have this thing called cipher control, but that oh that that's only applied when you manage to chair someone during the first and second camera, right? So then your first camera, you get someone down. Oh, you find someone who's down on the ground. No problem, great for you. You still have blink. This seems like a win game for you. But what if you didn't get the first one and you got the second one? Okay, if you get the second one, maybe you can somehow aim for the win, but at least you know that you can tie this one somehow. But if you fail to actually chair anyone, and when I say chair, I meant in real world, not in photo world, okay? In real world, you actually manage to chair someone within the first two photos, then great. But then like, if you can't or couldn't find them, then you're screwed. In a lot of ways because like in big maps the ciphers are so far apart photo only has presence to to like you know go from one cipher to the other but that's only if he goes past that cipher but that's only if he goes past that cipher all and all there's gonna be three ciphers left when there's one cipher remaining you're not gonna be able to walk to all three ciphers and then use your card to like teleport back that's that's highly impossible we saw how ckg ukg photographer from taiwan hong kong against SSC, SST team during the Koas. It does not work. When there's three ciphers left, that's, that's 
that's too hard. That's too hard. And of course, with photo, like I understand. All right, like if you if you do manage to get your get someone on chair within the first two camera, then you know you can at least tie, you can at least win. But then next comes the problem with second chair. What if they rebound kited? What if you missed your blink? What if they flywheeled your blink, etc, etc. But you see how like so many questions have been popped up right now, which is why like photographer is applicable. I don't think he's highly counterable just because there's a lot of good photographer mains out there and like if we compare photographer to Leo who's gonna be better at the end of the day it's gonna be photographer so yeah that's all what I'm gonna say for photographer now moving on uh, moving on we will have mad eyes add mad eyes will be considered as highly counterable too of course if this is in CN server it'd be different mad eyes will be considered as stream and friends but of course this is any EU server and if we include Asia yeah this is any EU slash Asia server Mad Eyes would be considered as highly camerable because of his nerfs as well. We know based off his nerfs, um, he has to bring insolence. Well, no, well, I mean, he always had to bring insolence. Uh, he has to bring insolence to open phase two. It, it's it's either that he manages to chip a survivor down, which is highly unlikely, or he has to chase a survivor and meanwhile using console to chip them down, which is of course a thing in CN server. But like, there's not that much Mad Eyes players. I'll be fair with you. There's not ma that much Mad Eyes player who can pull that off, which is why Mad Eyes is highly counterable. Maybe we maybe we could have more like really 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 good Mad Eye players, like at least 10 plus. I'll put him on Dream Witch and Friends. But like, no, no one's willing to learn him. So, and he's also highly counterable. Like you know, Enchantress, Prospector, Batter, just all the harass out there for you. So then he can't use his consoles. A little bit of an oof moment for Mad Eyes. Moving on, we will have Feaster. Feaster will be considered as applicable as well. Uh, I'm only I'm putting Feaster above Wu because of his double hit potential and because of the fact that you don't need to bring Tinnitus on him. A lot of Feaster mains do bring uh, Peepers, right? So then, like it, it allows it, it, it like just disables the survivors to loop a Feaster, and of course, slow movement speed, slow vaulting speed, slow interaction speed etc etc which is great and all for feaster um hey he does get countered by flywheel though which is why i'm saying he is applicable not high guaranteed i wouldn't put him on highly counterable because like i know you can only flywheel one tentacle not like 50 of them so yeah and you know some survivors just some survivors take them easy some like some feaster mains know when to use it when not to use it when to use it onto a choke point so then you can rotate into birdcage for example and you know etc etc he has a long hitbox which is great and all um his camp is great his chase is okay but he has no map control his map control is only is basically only hitting survivors and a tentacle, tentacle pops up but then survivors can remove those in five to ten seconds well let's say seven seconds seven to ten seconds it's not really that much and you know based off his nerf he doesn't regenerate his tentacles faster it's it is what it is and it, of course it depends on the survivors if survivors knows how to dodge their tentacles or not but you know all in all in all honesty in the current meta where survivors can use their items to transition you can probably dodge tentacles quite well let's say and of course fly use there as well so that's my take on feaster he has an okay chase, he has a really nice camp, but you can't. it's not really that easy to double hit because in current meta survivors, once you get a tentacle hit, you can immediately rescue because Feaster still has that animation time that can't be cancelled. So yeah, that's the thing, but in exchange, it'll be a double down. Double down is great now, but like, fail rescue is just better overall. Moving on, we'll have Dream Witch. Dream Witch will still be considered as Dream Witch and friends because you need high communication for Dream Witch. You need to have really good team cooperation against the Dream Witch. And of course, even with the amount of Dream Witch's nerf we're having, she's still considered as Dream Witch and friends. Just because she has map control, she has a decent chase because of patroller, she has a decent cipher control as well. She also has map pressure. What does she have? She has a relatively nice camp, right? Like if survivors, like her camp is basically based off Dream Witch's main body going out and then patroller, whoever's gonna come. Her main father will come back following her, hit the, sur hit the survivor and then like, she will immediately change towards the a uh, follower on the chair and a hit again so that's either a double den or a fail rescue as we can see there her camp is relatively good right 
Well, it depends on the dream which player, of course. Having four leeches is full map control. You can't really decode. But of course, we do know that you can play with a patroller. We, you can play, you can like use your items or even interaction with a patroller. But all in all, dream witch is dream witch. Uh, honestly, I can't, I can't put her on you. She's dream witch, my friend. She's used a lot, a lot because of her map pressure, because of her chase pressure, because of her cipher pressure, because of the amount of ability she can use. Change from you know, patroller to blink, patroller to abnormal, patroller to teleport, whatever, whatever. It's hella annoying having like 500 traits to deal against, to be fair. Moving on, we will have Axe Boy. I will put Axe Boy on Ty Guarantee now instead of Applicable. Did I put him on Applicable now, Season? I forgot, I probably need to check that. But, uh, Axe Boy is right now Ty Guarantee. Not better than Voileta in my personal opinion, of course. Is because you can't fly with his Fireball early game, right? So then like, so then like if, so then like, because of flywheel has been increased to 50 seconds and 30 seconds now, Axeboy can definitely guarantee a fireball hit, right, uh, soul hit, orb hit, soul orb hit, whatever you call it. So, I think, I think because of that, soul orb hit and then blink, great, great and all, he does have a good camp, of course, if you put, if you put resentful road down and another tree down, you have like, you can pull a fire orb, and then like, you can, some you can like almost guarantee let's say 70 percent or no 60 percent of the time guarantee that that fire orb is gonna hit the survivor because a you move faster than the survivors b you aim better when you move faster than the survivor so then if they sidestep you sidestep more than they do and the fireball will land and c he has a really good chase right he has a really good chase if survivors do decide to body block then it's an oofus doofus moment for them because axe boy can catch up to the survivor who was on chair and then then before tight because of resentful road uh he has great map pressure he has great chase his map is okay but he gets countered way too much by flywheel and of course by transitional kiting so his early game his early game and and by you know survivors dodging fireballs they can do that of course which is you know, a lot of survivors know how to do that. Uh, there's like the likes of, you know, a lot of transitional kiting survivors as well. You know, imagine a magician. Magician 1, boom, no fire orb. Acrobat 1 ball, boom, no fire orb. What else is there? Priestess 1 portal, boom, no fire orb. Mercenary 1 envelope, boom, no fire orb. Which is why he's not niche, he's tight guaranteed to me. You know, gel, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. Uh, moving on, we will have, let me see. We will have Evil Reptilian, I'm sorry to say, but Evil Reptilian will still be considered as applicable in this situation. Uh, and let me tell you why. After I drink my tea. Evil, Re Evil Reptilian will be considered as applicable because he only has his jumps early game, right? So imagine you're Tai Kaiden and Evil Reptilian and he only has his jumps early game. He has to land the jumps really well. If he doesn't land it well, then you can just go through a pallet and then put the pallet down and then he has to break the pallet, he has no jump. Right? His double hit, his smash down only is available when phase one is opened. Okay? It's only available when phase one is open, which means survivor have more than enough time to get a flywheel ready. And of course, like, okay, let's say you're really good retelling, you get one survivor down, like, when Blink is ready. Great, great for you. Fabulous. What happens next is if they if the survivors do come on rescue, your 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 chair camp is great and all, but it's easily counterable. It's easily counterable with the likes of you know if you okay you don't have mercenary, you ban mercenary, you ban seer. Or if you didn't ban mercenary, mercenary will come rescue. And then like even if it's not a rescuer who comes rescue, it may be someone who didn't bring tide come rescue. They will fly with your smash down and then rescue. You hit them, they rescue, and it's a uh, before half rescue, right? But then, like, in all in all, all in all, it's it's very predictable. It's very predictable how, like, how, like, how Reptilian will use his smash. And, of course, Reptilian is similar to Feaster, right? They have animation. So, when Reptilian smashes down, there's a small animation, and survivors only take one second to rescue someone, right? So then, like, if survivor wants to, they can just immediately go in, get their smash, and then, like, immediately rescue, and then get a double hit down. So it's a double down, of course, but it's still a before half rescue. So it's still, like, a tie guarantee there. But he's only applicable because that is very, that is a very rare case scenario to happen when it comes to Retibian's chair camp. Uh, 
After you get your first chase, your second chase will be very hard because you know flywheel. Unlike you know meta survivors, like niche survivors, or even just you know what was it again? High turner survivors, observer survivors, high turner and observer survivors are the same. It's really hard for Rotillion to do anything to be fair, which is why like he's really he's applicable but not high guaranteed. Uh moving on we will have BQ. I'll put BQ on niche as well. I'll put BQ on niche as well because good BQs out there know how to counter flywheel and of course flywheel isn't up until 50 seconds so BQ can definitely land a first hit blink for the second hit put the mirror out for the third hit to camp the ciphers and you know all in all she's good and all because of her chase she has no camp ability but her map pressure and chase ability is more than enough for her to be niche her mirror image basically ignores the fact that there's walls around so that's great and all and of course you can sandwich survivors so if they don't want to take the mirror image they will take your main body hit instead so yeah, Bloody Queen is good and all, she has no comp, she has good chase, she has good map control. But because of the fact that her mirror can go through basically anything, that's what makes her really really strong. Flywheel may be a thing, but after Dream Witch misses her hit, she can just catch up to you and then hit again. In some scenarios, if you flywheel towards an area where Bloody Queen is forced to, you know, to teleport to her mirror, then of course that's great for you, you basically earned a 30 second free kite. But all in all, against good bloody queens, that's really hard. And of course we have a lot of good bloody, bloody queens in the NA server. Just saying, right, just saying, just saying, wink wink. So yeah, BQ is niche. Moving on, we will have Baban. Baban will be considered as Thai guarantee. And let me explain this to you why, because some people were, like someone asked, why is Baban Thai guarantee when Alexis from Wolves uses Baban a lot? Okay, the reason why bomb one is tie guarantee is because you know selling is a thing. Selling is a thing. Right, selling is a thing. And like if bomb one like if bomb one needs to go shopping around early game to look for the survivors he has to chase, he does take him some time. And when that happens, of course, bomb one will most likely have six stacks of bombs. So you know, double chip and one blink down. Easy peasy. Understandable. But in the case of in the case of if he misses one chain bomb it's gonna be really hard to land the second chain bomb right because like bomb money in general uses like two bombs to chain bomb and that simply in my opinion is enough but in like a large case scenarios i use three just to be a little bit more safe so like if you miss one chain bomb of course you have a second chance but it's gonna be a little bit harder because you know you use two and then you use three and then you'll get another three great 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 and all but by the time you have six stacks that's like 30 seconds wasted of, of your time, right? And each 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 bomb detonates uh, two seconds. So let's say 30 seconds look for survivor. Okay, your first bomb is two seconds, so that's plus two, 32 seconds. Second bomb is another two seconds, 34 seconds. But think about it this way: How long does it take you to la to like you know aim and put down a trap? Probably five seconds, and then like you know another 10 seconds to blink someone down. It's all in all 60 to 70 seconds time right there, and that's at least two and a half ciphers done. Right, so the rescuer comes rescue, two ciphers done. The other two goes to decode a new cipher. They can either sell. If they do sell, it's a tight guarantee for Bonbon. If they don't sell, it's still a tight guarantee for Bonbon. Unless, like, they feck up with the rescue. Bonbon has an okay chase. Bonbon has an okay chase. Because his chain bomb is basically, you know, on the ground compared to Sculptor where you have to hit an obstacle. His chain bomb is basically on the ground, which is why I say he is okay chase. You probably know he, he has a bad chase, but it's okay compared to Sculptor, let's say it this way. Um, he has a bad chase, okay, let's just say he's a bad chase, but not better than, but not worse than Sculptor. His, um, his chair camp is absolutely godly, and he has no map control. Because of the fact that his map control is basically little to none except for the fact that he has to walk out of his way to throw the bomb towards the cypher and put a 5 second bomb down, 2 second bomb down and just and just annoy one survivor who's decoding. If you, the chair, if the survivor you chair is far away from the survivors who are decoding on the machines, it's going to be really hard for you to map control so yeah 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 yeah. he's tight guaranteeing in honesty alex does a really good job of course at downing survivors fast but that's alex that's wolves alex that's ppx they are different from us okay they, they these are pro players right we're not really on that 
to be fair, we're not really on that, to be fair, right? And Bombon does get countered by harassers as well, so yeah, 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 good luck with that anyways. Uh, moving on, we will have Disciple. Disciple will also be considered as tie guarantee, maybe a little bit above Bombon. Um, for Disciple, it really depends on who you chase first. If you want, like, Disciple, and has a really nice chase, and has a really good chair cam, but she has no map control. Um, her chase is counterable because you know if you chase after Ento, Ento can just put bees in between a gap and then you can't jump. Uh, the same with Acrobat, Priestess, Mercenary, Forward, Seer. Who else do we have? Uh, there's too much. There's too much survivors. I don't know to be fair. There's too much. Uh, so yeah. So for Anne, it simply depends on like who you chase first and how you chase them, and depends on the survivor as well. Of course, if you can land your first, you know, three cats. It'll be at least a guaranteed tie. Well, I mean, she's a guaranteed tie from the get-go, right? Unless you feck up somewhere. Because, you know, you can definitely land the first hit. You have three cats to use before Blink is ready. And then when you Blink, you Blink them down. That's basically where tie, where your tie guarantee comes from. Uh, she's not afraid of harassers, which is great. So, you can, so she can chair survivors, no problem at all. The only problem with Anne is she's only tie guaranteed. So if you want to win, it's either that you do a really good chair camp or you do a really good chase early game, 30 second chase early game. So they sell and then you somehow, you know, win that. But all in all for Anne, she's 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 picked a lot for tie gar for a tie guarantee hunter. But you know in IVLs the survivors don't still somehow get a dream on escape majority of the time, so it's a bit scary. It's a bit scary. But she is she is a tie guarantee at the end of the day. She is, she is, she is. Moving on, we will have Violini. So basically from the last tier list, someone was saying that Violinus was more applicable than Thai Guarantee. And of course, I can understand why you feel that way. But let me just explain to you why I feel like he's still more of a Thai Guarantee. Now, first and foremost, the Violinus is Thai Guarantee to me. Why, you may ask? Because like flywheel is now 50 seconds and of course survivors can dodge the strings but if you're patient enough with the strings you can put pressure on the survivors to not go through the pallet or windows right because if they do then you can immediately put the pull down the strings and voila what do you have you have a half health survivor which you can either a use your next strings to down them or b wait for blink now in the rare case scenario that you don't really get them down, you know, fast enough and all three cyphers pop, your second chance is your chair camp, right? Your chair camp is basically you pull down the strings and then you somehow to land the strings and then you hit again. Because Voilinus doesn't have a Voilinus doesn't have a animation when it comes to pulling his strings. And when you put down his strings, the animation is already there, he already refreshes animation, and if the strings land you can immediately hit. So that's how fail rescue right there from the survivor side to therefore stop someone else to come and rescue which is great right so Voilinus has like that kind of redemption like he's allowed to make mistake and like if he managed to, to you know uh not renew like um redeem his mistakes he's still a tight guarantee and of course for phase two there's this thing that Voilinus do when they hit the survivor. When they try the strings first, hit the survivor. And then when the survivor runs towards the chair, they'll immediately use their phase 2. And boom, 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 they can't rescue. Because either they get hit by the strings or they need to stand still and wait for the hunter to go towards them and then get hit. So yeah, Voilinus' camp is not too bad to be fair. Because a lot of EU, a lot of EU Voilinus think like, okay, no, we need to, we need to like... We need to like save our strings until get, they get near the chair so then we can get them to have health and then you know use our phase two and then get them down again but in cn there's a lot of different mind games going on if the survivor is far from chair and the hunter knows that the survivor can't close the distance fast enough the violinist will immediately put down the two strings first and then throw out the strings and throw out the strings first hit and then use your phase two presence to get them down so yeah, that's like my take for Voilinus. Of course, you can flywheel a Voilinus, you know, string and all, but it's 50 seconds. You'll have to link by the time that happens, so you shouldn't be too worried, in my personal opinion. Oof, okay. Okay, now then, moving on, we will have Sculptor. Sculptor, for me, is considered as a niche as well, but, you know, probably not higher than Geisha and BQ, to be fair on that point. 
sculptor is counterable if you know how to dodge her statues, but you know, phase 2 present sculptor is scary, a sculptor camping is also scary, and even if you don't land your chips, a lot of sculptor mains will simply use your statues to block your way and then like, you know, waste your time so then the sculptor can catch up to you and land a normal hit and then blink them down. Sculptor is niche because she may have a really bad chase compared to Bonbon, bon, and you know, she may have a really bad chase compared to Bonbon, bon, but because of her chair camp and her map pressure, and of course her statues, it allows her to become niche, right? Compared to Bonbon, bon, Sculptor doesn't have a better camp, but she has a decent camp enough to be, you know, just one level, one level below Bonbon, bon, but not on the same level as Bonbon, bon, but that is still good. Her double statues are really good as well, but compared to Bonbon, bon, you actually need phase 2 for that. Bonbon bon doesn't need phase 2 for that, Bonbon bon can just do it in the open area, which is great and all. But for Sculptor, you need to do it in phase 2. She may be counter, but all in all, a lot of Sculptor mains use their statues to block survivors' way, so then they can catch up with the survivors and to hit them. And of course, if you're lucky, you've landed chip. If you're unlucky, you know, it's fine. It is what it is. Um, what else is there? Sculptor doesn't have good chase. Sculptor's chisel was nerfed, and Sculptor's phase 2 statues was nerfed. So, like, a lot of, stu a lot of Sculptors now can't really get a survivor down with her chisel and her statues when phase 2 has been opened. But, like, it is possible. I'm not saying it ain't possible. It is definitely possible. So, like... So like, so like, don't think to, so like, just, 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 how do I say this? So like, so like, it's possible. It's definitely better than Bonbon. Bon, and it's not a biased view. Cause like, you're not able, you're, you're not able to dodge all her statues. Like, you know, transitional window statues and palace statues. Those are pretty hard, pretty darn hard to, um, pretty darn hard to like, you know, sidestep away from and not to take the chip damage. So yeah. Why, why is explaining Sculptor a little bit harder than explaining all the other hunters in the mall? That's really funny. So yeah, Sculptor is niche, just not better than BQ and, 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 and Geisha. She doesn't have that much of a good chase, but she does have her statues. She does have chisel for map pressure, and she does have one double statue open. Maybe her chase will be a little bit better. But all in all, she's just, you know, she's like a walking... No, I'm joking, I can't say that. She has statues. So yeah, that, that's it for Sculptor. It's a bit weird coming saying that from me. Uh, now then moving on, we will have Undead. Now, Undead is quite funny. So Undead is quite a funny one, because I don't know whether he's highly counterable now or not, or applicable. Because to me, because to me right now, after like, you know, we have seen Enches nerf, right? So then that just means that, you know, Undead is kind of useless now, because he counters, he counters stone teams. But also, he has a really bad... Well, he doesn't have a bad chase, but his hitbox is weird. He doesn't have camp. He does have map control, he does have chase. But, like, it's not that much compared to Geisha and BQ, to be fair. And you can't really necessarily down a survivor. The only thing Undead has is his dash, right? And, like, survivors can loop him a lot. Which is why I'm gonna say that he's highly counterable, sadly. He won't be applicable because he's easily... He's easy, he, you can easily loop him. And you can mind game him to use his dash, so then like you, you can sidestep a dash pretty well. I won't lie, you can sidestep it pretty well. And I, of course, I know it's gonna be like if you want to win as him or even to tie as him, you need to get someone down fast ASAP and then you need to go find your second chase ASAP and down them very fast ASAP. That's basically how you win. It's hard for Undead to like tunnel a survivor because all what they can do is they either crawl towards you know the nearest very very strong hiding area use their self heal put the pallet down and then hide for a very long time which is scary or if undead leaves them they can just crawl to an area and then you know very strong like god kite very strong hiding area kite for proceeds to kite for 60 to 70 seconds which is highly annoying of course and they can self heal they don't need to be rescued first rescued they don't need to be rescued they can just do whatever which is why I'm just saying like he's highly counterable and you can fly with him you can also transition against him come some kinda but you know Taikaidium is just the best way to counter an undead which is why I'm saying he's highly counterable it doesn't really depend on what survivors have it simply depends on how undead plays and how survivor counters the undead and how they play like you know crawling to a very strong hiding area which is really oofus doofus for me
Moving on, we will have Nayed. Uh, Nayed would be a funny one. Nayed would be quite a funny one, but I'm gonna put Nayed below. I'm gonna put Nayed. Uh, I'm gonna put Nayed on tie guarantee. I'm gonna put Nayed on tie guarantee. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say, but I don't see her near niche anymore after all the tourneys that I've seen. Like, Nayed is great and all, but. When she gets harassed, she gets harassed to death, right? And it's really hard to make a big puddle. It's really hard to make a big puddle to um to like counter counter the harass because if the harasser brought fly wheel, you're basically screwed. I'm sorry, but you're basically screwed. I mean, against good nights, of course. I mean, like, with good knights, of course, you can definitely become niche, but knight for me right now is more of a tie guarantee. She has high chase, she has, uh, she has a small map control because she can lock ciphers with her puddle, but she doesn't, she, and she has an okay camp. It's not that good, to be fair. It's not that good, to be fair. Uh, what else is there? Like, like, imagine knight just throws out a harpoon and then, like, the survivor stands still there near a transitioning area, like a pallet or a... A window and when Nayid gets her harpoon back basically what happens there is survival will just immediately evolve because there's an animation right so for Nayid it's kind of really hard to down someone because you need to think okay do I want to make a bit pull first or do I just want to catch up to the survivors and they hit them and they blink them down right and of course if survivors have flywheel they don't really care they don't really care if you like tight kite, if if, if 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 they want to tight kite you, they just will because they fly wheel. Because why not? Hey hey. So yeah, in all honesty, in all honesty, night like if it's like the previous when there's no fly wheel, then like there's only transition. Then night would definitely be niche in my opinion. But because of fly wheel and because a lot of survivors do bring fly wheel, she's a tight guarantee for me. She's not a niche anymore, sadly, because of fly wheel. So yeah, that's my take on night. Next we will have wheel, breaking wheel palu. Uh, don't mind my, don't mind this, I put him on an applicable, I rethought about it, I'm gonna put him on niche. Now, reason for wheel for being niche is, flywheel is now 50 seconds, I keep repeating myself, I know 30 seconds to 50 seconds, but because flywheel is now on 50 seconds, wheel can at least land one spike before the flywheel is up. So if you manage to land one spike, change the human form, land your trap, get a hit. And then, if you can't land your second spike, or if they flywheel your second spike, you can at least change the human form and then blink them down. Right, that's at least a 60-70 window right there for you to down a survivor, which is no problem at all. Wheel has good map control, wheel has good chase, wheel has uh, not a good camp. His, own, his camp only comes from like managing to spike survivor twice before they reach the chair, and then like it's an instant down. That's his camp in general. His attack animation is a bit too slow, so survivors can react on time. Similar to Joseph, they can react on time. But if it's like, you know, if it's Geisha or BQ or Nayid where the attack is really fast, they can't really react on time. So yeah, Wheel is niche. Of course, his first chase is like at least a guaranteed 60 to 70 second down, which I think is fair. Right, and like if you do go around looking for whoever you want to chase, that's fine as well. You'll definitely find him before 50 seconds, land your spike, land your trap, get a hit, and then blink down. Change the wheel form, catch up to them, and then blink down. Or even you can save your blink, Tano snap down, and see if they have flywheel or not. Uh, so yeah, wheel has every- like wheel is pretty much our friends, but we're gonna bring him down. I'm very- my tier list, this right now is very similar to Eli O. He's gonna be niche, but I'm gonna put him like in between Nayid and BQ. I'm gonna put him in between Nayid and BQ. So yeah, that's my opinion on Wheel. Moving on, we will have Wax Artist. What? No, not Wax Artist. Nightmare. Nightmare is also considered as applicable. You can't really fly wheel Nightmare, right? But he's also not a tie guarantee because he only has his dash, and his dash is counterable in so many ways, shape, and form. Um, it's gonna be, like, it's really hard to mind game survivors, especially in, like, long, long window areas where, like, you kind of have to walk before you press your dash. So, it simply depends, and of course, if there are harassers, it's an oofus doofus moment, you're just gonna get harassed to oblivion. But of course, if you have your crows on a survivor who just ran away and you can teleport them, great. Now then, how are you gonna get them down? Oofus doofus moment, are you on phase 2? If you're not, then you're probably just screwed. Which is why a lot of nightmares run insolence on him. Which I think is great. 
He's applicable because he does get countered by transitioning. He does not really get countered by Kai kiting, but it depends on you know the gap between you and the survivors. How you know how tight are they actually Tai kiting, right? So yeah, that's all and all. Nightmare has decent chase. He has map control. I wouldn't say the best, and he has little to none chair cam. So yeah, he's kind of underwhelming, but he's still applicable compared to like all the others. Like, I'm just gonna say he's better than Joseph. Right, I'm just gonna say he's better than Joseph. Just because of his map control, he can dash, he can do a lot of stuff, he can dash and then blink dash. He can do a lot of stuff, he can catch up to survivors pretty fast. Joseph is highly general because Doofus Doofus moments, what else can you do against him? Like against current meta survivors, I don't really know. Maybe I'm wrong about Joseph, you never know. Uh, moving on, we have Wax Artist. For me, Wax Artist will be considered as a niche, probably here. Now, Wax Artist is definitely tight guarantee, but Wax Artist is more of a niche in my opinion, right? Because like, you can you can do two things. You can ban Seer, and then even if survivors do have um, flywheel, it's highly unlikely that they're gonna flywheel your Wax because you can basically mind game in thinking that you they're gonna be at one hundred percent Wax, and then by the time that you do they do fly really you can just box again and then you know hit them and then blink them down he has map control not the best but he does have map control with his box his chase is not too bad and even if survivors do transition kai she can just use his box to you know put some box on them and you know whatever whatever voila whatever it is um he can run detention trump card he can run top down of he can run like insolence he can also run confined space it really depends on the wax artist and of course for phase two wax artist when you open the hot wax that's going to be pretty strong as well to be fair that's going to be pretty strong as well to be fair if you know how to play a wax artist you can't really tie kite a wax artist near windows because they can just block the windows but you know you can tie kite them near walls or near pallets but all in all it depends on the wax artist he's niche he has an okay chase he has an okay he has a good camp good enough camp and he has a really nice map control and to a certain extent. He's definitely better than Nayid because Nayid doesn't have to. Uh, Nayid doesn't have to. Like, Waxar doesn't have to wonder about, oh, oh yeah, uh, what happens if they fly wheel? They can't really fly wheel you. So yeah, Waxar is just niche to me personally. Yeah, just niche to me personally, to be fair. Uh, moving on, we'll have Clerk. I cannot. Put Clerk on Dream Much on Friends just yet, I'm sorry to say. Now, Clerk is really good, right? After Encha's nerf, I do believe with Eli, from watching his tier list, that she does belong into the meta. But for me, for me, in all honesty, it's hard to judge. It's really hard to judge right now. Because to counter Clerk, all what you have to do is get another survivor to body block you and prolong the Kaish. Right, because if Clerk can't get the survivor on chair to return to the mainer because of their teammates body blocking, then it's gonna be really hard for you to to control the ciphers. Right, so like for Clerk, she's strong. She's definitely strong, and of course after like you know Ench has been nerfed, she's definitely a part of the high niche, definitely better than Geisha and PQ. But because in rank you can only ban two survivors, so if you ban Prospector and forward they'll come out with a batter and a enchantress maybe who, who else can harass who else can harass i'm not sure i forgot wildling so it's gonna be really hard on clerk to become very much on friends to me she has very nice map control she doesn't have camp but that's okay her map control is basically her camp by locking the ciphers but is it gonna be easy to down a survivor fast with clerk not really. If they have window speed boost, then they can just pull distance. If they have flywheel, then they can just tie kite. Right? Record is reduced from 16 seconds to 12 seconds, which allows survivors to, you know, have an easier kiting time, which I think is great for survivors, because 16 seconds was a bit too long. Was a bit too long, in all honesty. For Clerk, you can bring a uh, blink or excitement, depending on the team comp, of course, if you don't want to get excitemented. Or if you get Palestine, you can just immediately excitement and hit the survivor 40 seconds down. Beautiful. But all in all, she's not a part of Dream Witch and Friends, sadly. It just doesn't see. It's just not right for me to see her as Dream Witch and Friends, sadly. Right? She gets countered by survivors body blocking, 
she also gets countered by harassers. She also doesn't have that much of a good chase. Her, I say her chase is okay, but in all honesty, against like crew meta survivors, her chase is not that great. It's okay, it's not that great though. It's really not that great. So yeah, that's my opinion on Claire. Can't really put her on Dream Witch and Friends. I think Dream Witch is actually just on her own for this season. Maybe. Moving on, we will have Hermit. Hermit would be niche as well, and I will explain this to you why. So Hermit is niche. Uh, she's not. He's not part of Dream Witch and Friends because you know, depending on how Hermit plays, if he decides to link the Cypher's early game, survivors can share the damage. That's great and all. But the only problem is survivors know. Survivors do know, like when survivors do know how many, you know, how many, um, how many. What? How do I say this to? You? How many of them have to change polarity to share the damage? So then, the survivor who is being chased would be at you know 95% health well 5% health left right so then like that just benefits the survivors a lot in a way if they know how to do it which is why I think it counters hermit a lot which is why I think it counters hermit a lot hermit isn't too afraid of harassing to be fair he's not too afraid of harassing but because of damage share with skill survivors don't really have to heal right so they can just come rescue share the damage and then successfully rescue voila and of course for a second chase you can't really push you can't really put like a polarity onto the survivor who's on chair because the survivors can just change polarity and then share damage now what happens you need to two hit the survivor down but of course kermit does have cypher control and if his early if his early game is good then great great for you you can there's a high chance of you winning it but if your early game is basically shy you're screwed you're screwed so like he has a great early game but if you can't if you manage to go to end game you're you're done you're done you are done you're done sadly you're just done so yeah it simply depends on the survivor as well how they counter him but because of his map control and of course of his stuns like long range stuns and you know because of his teleport as well like cypher control map control those two are great his chase is actually good as well because a lot of hermit brings insolence on the insolence detention on him is just great maybe we'll teleport maybe we'll blink depends on you i will blink blink just because i don't want the survivors to change polarity and it takes me longer to hit someone down so yeah hermit is great and all but not a part of dream witch and friends just yes uh am i missing anyone i don't think so let me see one two three four five six seven oh what am i doing this way so 7, 13, 13 plus H is 21 and 4 is 25. Yeah, I say we have 25. And then that'll be the end for season 22, Hunter Tier List. We will see you all in the next season. And of course, I know, I know there's going to be some that you guys don't disagree. There's going to be some that you guys agree. But this is, but you know what? Feel free to do whatever you want. Feel free to do whatever you want. And of course, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye for now.